right, this one's going to be quick. Um, it's a more serious topic. One of the main um, like subsections based upon the direction of the information of the the primary overall focus of bringing this information to you, which that subsection is uh, imperative or threats against humanity and the individuals involved, and then uh, the direction and basically informing the public of what is necessary from basically those three stages of kind of this corruption, advanced technology, and cosmic effects and, and all that. And then uh, basically the overall idea of disclosure, but the, the beginning of that is more or less it has to be sensitive because it has to be based upon the individual coming to the knowledge or the information and uh, re requesting it in a way other than being told because this whole civilization is based upon accepting what you're told without questioning it and uh, the very act of being a part of it is an unconscious agreement with the controllers of this society to accept the illusion and forget the, uh, the, the self, if you will. So the very first aspect of informing is first telling people that the way they're acting and using their mind now, they can't be informed. So it's, it's weird. But um, beyond all that, this is basically has to do with what people call my labs and the, uh, the underground soldier uh, training system. So I just wanted to add something to this information. A lot of people have a good portion of the picture, but nobody has a whole picture. I haven't really seen people talk about what needs to be talked about because they think they're doing stuff. Gung ho, yeah, they got it. Same thing happens that's been happening for millions of years happens and turns out that was just a program that was invented so that they get all gung ho and think they're fighting against something and the same damn thing happens over and over again. What I'm going to tell you is a portion. It's just a portion. People cannot comprehend with the arrangement of neurons, the brain regions, and the alignment, the, the uh, like structural hierarchy of it in motion in activity, meaning the electrical brainwave layers, the way they're organized. People can't see the truth. Their brains fracture the way it works, their, their electricity, their, their personality, and they become inverted. And there's like a one side that knows, and then, or basically that does not know, and is like peachy cheery. And then the other side, past the singularity of their personality, that knows all these things, and they split into do, and they kind of uh, reflect one another. And so it's just how it goes. But basically, the children that are used for my labs, who are mind controlled and groomed from more or less birth, but just not physically until later on. Although it is, it's just. Uh, it's methods that are used before when, when uh, the child is younger um, and they won't basically know that uh, it's a form of training or programming or something like that um, but uh, it's basically to to have a afterlife army that can operate outside of the physical plane and basically ensnare the, the souls of the children into a system, including a technological mind entrainment system, so that they uh, basically can't leave, and even at that point, death won't do anything. Uh, it's like taking the avatar, uh, the the avatar body, and then taking the um, player and putting the player into another game system in between the time of the original game system. And so they can die once of times as much as they want, but until they get from that to that original body, and then take that original body, the avatar, the player, the game player, the the game, and they have to go through sacred process, a, a steps basically reorganizing, reunifying with the soul, and breaking free from the uh, illusion, finding liberation, excuse me, finding liberation, and um, realizing the self, and basically uh. It has to do with truth, compassion, free will, self-awareness. One has to become totally self-aware, or at least closer to it, to the point where they can see all these things that are happening that are cut out of our conscious mind. To get to the whole view, we have to stop filtering, which is a process that the ego uh, activates or initiates, where it filters information with a personal selective bias that confirms what we already believe and it basically just tells us a, a fairy tale of reality so that we remain calm and that you, you can see these things happening that we can just talk about and and you know bring up outlines of out here 
when the stress is on because people are showing inf being shown information that basically threatens their worldview, that's when you see it come alive and you see a person literally divert into two streams of awareness, one that knows and one that doesn't, and the one that doesn't is doing mental gymnastics to keep up with the, the charades, you can see how everything is literally charades that are being played upon, uh, projected out by personality, by uh, a, the developed personality and according to uh, more or less information, according to trauma or, or less trauma and more integration that occurred through the developmental phases of the childhood and it can have it can be shaped it's always shaped you know a 40 year old being shown something they can't handle it's the same uh, as a 12 year old although the 12 year old is going to have more of their life influenced by that than the 40 year old because they've already been longer but both people can can fracture or uh, can actually overcome it and learn but in, even in that, in that sense it's more likely for the child to overcome and learn uh, basically the truth than an adult. Uh, it's because the truth of this world is inherently from the start beyond the limits of what the conscious mind can comprehend, of what the biological consciousness can comprehend. This is part of why some people believe that it's a type of trap, whether it's a soul trap, spiritual, whatever, physical for the soul, you know, the body's a, a trap for the soul, whatever it is. Inherently, our biology doesn't permit the orientation to, to, to bring about an effective comprehension or capacity to know that yields uh, what we would consider a, a form of uh, acceptable use and, and self-control over our own existence. So it's as if we're inherently in a spiritual game where we don't have the free will that we would want. Although in my opinion, we do. It's just that uh, we don't know what it looks like when we see it, and uh, we 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 think it's as bad as it can get. And in reality, it's all peachy cheery here. This is the time and the place where we make ourselves known, and uh, it could be in a thousand different feet, one direction or another. And uh, the conscious mind isn't going to know. It's just going to base everything off of what's happening here and now. And if it's, you know, happy, it'll be like, basically, this is as good as it is. And if it's bad, it'll be like, this. Is, it can never get any worse than this. But not, neither of those are correct. They're both just selective, uh, attention-based um, perspectives of reality, which are confined to just a limited data set. So, uh, but the idea is that uh, with this particular information, uh, it's... Uh, it's like an interdimensional military force. And with the information, with the experiences, they can wipe a person's mind and upload just the soul, the spark of energy into these robotoid or non-humanoid chimera type beings and uh, use them by programming them, the beings, and then taking the soul spark and putting it in the, uh, the beings and uh, basically using that person's energy to, to navigate to control these beings to make an interdimensional military force for whatever they want. That's what it's all about. Unless people are talking about that, unless people are talking about the ritual abuse, unless people are talking about the mind control that's going on in mass, what happened in ancient history, so on and so forth, if they're complaining about one sp particular portion of this, one specific little storyline that's been presented to them by, oh so conveniently, the intelligence agencies, until then, they're not aware, they're not self-aware, they're not classified as self-aware humans, they're not classified as soul beings, they're, they're not. And it's not, it doesn't mean, well, you go in the red line, you go in the blue, no, it has nothing to do with that. It's just the fact that nothing that is done is going to change anything. The kids are still going to get brought up, the people that were involved, they're still going to get their soul entangled into a giant device, the people who are supposed to be helping something out here are still going to get the bad results, or whatever you want to call it, negative effects of... of spiritual war with advanced technology and spiritual degradation and mind control and, and, and poison and things like that, and not to be the paranoid, the, you know, conspir conspiracy expert here, which says everybody that watches this knows that's far from what it is because nothing is conspiracy to me because I was there. But uh, that's the whole point of, you know, toxins and everywhere and blah, blah, it's all out to get to us. Half of that is to protect us. People don't even realize. But the point is, once we go so far... You know, then it gets really bad, and then we don't have a chance to complain. There's no chance to complain. It's been, the, the, the tidal wave has been held back. The dam has been, you know, standing up against a torrent of spiritual BS. But the point is, 
our civilization, our species is being used to fund, to profit, to be the footwork, the foot soldiers, and they put the manpower in for these, these operations. And it happens forwards and backwards in time. And so the whole point is that everyone in the civilization must be liberated. That's the whole point of this whole thing. That there can be one human left in mental captivity, otherwise it will draw the DNA of the whole civilization down, the whole species. And, uh, and then, you know, the definition of original human and what happened between then and now and how time even works, it's all going to have to be explained. I'll try and leave this here. I, probably, I don't want to upload this, but it's something that has to be said. Be a lot of people, you know, they think I'm talking about one thing or the other. Um, those are programs we invented, so you don't understand what's going on. You keep jumping from topic to topic like a leapfrog. You get to one where you feel safe, and that's the one that they're going to go and drop it down into the moat. Um, and so, uh, the trick is, all of them are like that. You know, it's all just an illusion. But that against the backdrop of what, in contrast, where would we be? People can't comprehend, because the experience disrupted time, the experiments. Um, but yeah, I was just going to say something, but I kind of even forgot what I was going to say. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that are still going to be trapped within this system and uh all people have to be be woken up and changed and i was going to say the idea about time just to add into this one 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 of the aspects that we were shown along with you know if you think hard enough you'll get this it means the same thing if you know you look into modern day hypothetical or theoretical quantum physics or that the link between that and spiritualism and stuff like that and don't get too into the fluffiness there but um there's a link and of course then everybody that's like man that fluffy idea doesn't mean that well that was what they put out so that people don't know that that's the whole point that never had anything to do with what really went on they put out the stuff that they want people to squabble over and uh, quarrel over when they've been traveling through time using this technology but the point is that hmm uh, I'll, I'll put a link to a video there's a theory, which is how it works, that because otherwise you wouldn't be able to have the experiences that we've had and the experiments that we've uh, partic uh, participated in. But that time echoes out and kind of radiates outward. But the point is that what's in the past, and the idea is that it's already happened, as if we're, it's an orb and the waves are radiating out or in a pond. And the idea is that they get longer. So when you compare medieval times to the time of now the seconds would move at a different rate which is what we're experiencing some type of acceleration and so but the idea is that that's printed out from a type of cosmic generator that's pulsing out time and possibilities and the way we perceive space and time is the easiest way to put it is that it's an illusion the way we we perceive it it's a, it's an illusion it's just like a camera running frames uh a specific rate per second and providing the image of uh, or the, the the perception of motion picture of, of living people moving people and so there's a way it's just as easy to say it was 600 years ago as it is to say it was like six sorry for using six not really though if you're afraid of numbers then that mind virus that you're trying to like get away from it, it will got you and you're it because why are you afraid of numbers notice know the meaning behind them behind the numbers what they mean the carbon the man and the copy and the genetic manipulations that went on to the dna in the 666 harmonics um and so uh what's it called um and it wasn't exactly 666 the actual number of the bible is 616 but it has to do with DNA harmonics being linked so that certain races couldn't uh, breed and it resulted in inbreeding and a lot of weird stuff. But um, this is genetic, genetic manipulation, early genetic harvesting breeding programs. And that's again what it's all about, genetic harvesting. If you're not stopping them from harvesting our genetics, then what good is what anybody is doing? That's how they restart time every time. It's part of the video that's going to come out soon when the time is right for it. But everyone that is here now is from the system. You couldn't get to this realm without being kidnapped. It doesn't work that way. That's why everyone who figures it out realizes that it's all a show here. 
this world exists originally in another plane. That's where the code for all this life exists. Somebody stole it from the underground lab, basically, in heaven or whatever you want to call it, and then came over to a void space that they probably invented, they made inside of a specific area, and then plopped us all down so that they could rule over it. And you can see the, uh, the sign of that everywhere when you know what to look for. That's the false creator. But um, it's easy, just as easy to say with these devices, it's six degrees to the right or the left that 600 years ago was. Not 600 years ago and then somewhere off in space in an abstract, but it's literally a frequency layer, amount of degrees off of the spin of where we are now, just like the frame rate, and you have like a, a clock that's ticking to catch it at a specific angle each time. That's uh, angular momentum and the frame rate, the camera ticking of your eye catching the, the, the atom, basically, electron spin at a specific time each way. You time it differently and you're catching it at this point on the circle now each time. You might be in another dimension or another time period. So it's literally all right here packed within us. Um, and apparently what, they, what we were told is that they inserted multiple centuries. So what we think is like eons ago or centuries ago is actually added. It was invented in like the 40s. It's crazy, craziest stuff, but that's what, what we're told. And uh, in that sense, all, everybody of all of history is here because there's really no such thing as history. They, keep, they literally began this whole experiment by adding time in apparently somewhere far in the future. And literally a thousand, two thousand years ago, everything that we have as part of our part of our recorded history is literally designed through a program system and inserted in time from the future, ahead of time. Basically, we began doing this as like a project. It's the craziest thing, but if they can like prove it by opening a portal to that time and showing it that it's all just on their computer system. Yeah, you'll, you'll reconsider things, but the point is that the Dark Faction, their goal is to restart this whole civilization to gain power. So if they have power, they enjoy the power, they're going to do that. Okay, well, what's the worst they do? They slap everybody around. They steal a bunch of stuff. It's like, oh, bad boys. They lie to everyone. We defeat them, and they take enough genetics to start up a new realm division system of a new planetary dimension, and they restart, reseed humanity two billion years ago and come back and enslave everyone all over again. That's the worst they could do. And that's what they've been doing for millions of years. That's the whole point. Everything else is just like a show. It's just stuff they invented so that people talk about that and squabble back and forth. Meanwhile, it doesn't change anything. So everyone has to find liberation, and it's through the discerning process and the, uh, the energetic, uh, basically, healing process. It has to do with the seven seals and the old god system and what's been going on as far as who's been lying, who's been dressing up in psychotronic warfare suits and things like that and pretending they're gods and uh, altering DNA and history basically in the same way that I described, but now from someone else. The last thing I'll say, this is completely disjointed. I haven't had one like this in a long time, but this is how it is. Um, would you rather have somebody you know doing it, maybe a, namely a human, or would you, would you rather have uh, someone of another race doing it and inserting time and controlling everything that you don't even share uh, a portion of DNA, of DNA with? Which one would you rather have tinkering with things? So that's what it is, and it's all about them getting genetics and minds, or bio-mind soul energy, to power their soldiers and uh, if you exert love for a person and say within to source of all that you enable you will protection upon this person that has an effect and when a, there's enough devotion to the source of all the one true creator Okay, without getting into names that then cut it down into a category which remove it from the all. Because, don't you get it? That's the whole point. It's not that if you can name it. Um, it that's the whole point. And, and literally being like, but it's okay, I'm just going to name this one time. You just created the devil. There's no such thing. It doesn't work that way. What you actually said is going to become a being in the other planes. And if it's not, it's knowingly not what you're looking for, 
you make a devil. That's how this whole situation started on the other planes. But um, because we create with our, our words. But if a person has enough devotion and enough protection from others as they're giving it out to themselves and to others, basically like a big reflection system, then the targeting doesn't work. Where it's basically time decays. These, these influences, these experiments, decay a person's ability to remain in time. So we're getting erased from history, wiped out of immortality. The whole point is that we have to be regained and, and uh, reactivated, if you will. And this can very rarely happen on an individual basis where a person literally gains the power of the planet, or if you would call it, like, you would call that a, a midwayer, or possibly a, a local god, like a realm god. Um, but that's where the distor distortions between those, they all work up with the source, but the none of us are the source. That's the whole point. If you ever find him or her, you know, the source, and it's like, like he's in that room over there. That's the whole point. How is how's the all things, the, the foundation of all things going to fit in a room or a nation or a place or a book or whatever it is. That's the whole point. It's just the concept of singularity. The concept itself is singularity, not one singular thing you find or it finds you and tells you and convinces you. The more material use that it, uh, resources that it has to use to convince you, the less likely it is to be that present on the, the higher spiritual planes, because that's the whole point. The two are at a countenance with each other, with each other and that's the whole point, that um, it balances. Otherwise, somebody would have all the money and power in the world, and they would actually be God. No, that's the point. It's the opposite. God, in the sense of the one true creative force, it could be anywhere. It could be the bum down the street. It could be, you know, a, a songbird flying by your window giving you a, 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 an inspiring message. It could be anybody, anything. That's the whole point. If it's ever one particular one or thing, it's the liar. That's the point. It's the fake Buddha, the imitator. And that's why people who feel that within them and are like, yeah, I can control and stuff like that, it's the false king of tyranny programming. It was literally des designed by hellions from demiurgic factions, soul groups whose only goal is to leech off of humanity or, or destroy them. And actually, the goal, high goal is to destroy them. They just have to leech off of them first because it's easier. It weakens them. Um, yeah, we, don't, we don't have that. But, uh, so it's a, the mind virus is the time virus, and it entangles our energy in a system that's dying. If we entangle in the falling uh, false world system, then basically we'll die with it. And... That's the only way a person, a soul, can die. Other than this world here and what has happened this one time here, this travesty, nobody, there's no death ever in existence. It doesn't, it's never happened before. No one's ever seen what death is. Not one being. Only people from this planet. That's because it's an experiment. you got to think, well, you have unlimited funds. You can do anything. Oh, there's not enough sun. That's why the waters are doing this and the bugs do that and they have to bite and fight each other and they'll die there's no such there's no limit to the resources of existence so if it's <laughs> it's a big battle that is largely lost because this is not life it has nothing to do with it it's a projected realm somebody tinkered with the the configurations of dna and they just want to watch a death match a bloody death match between innocent children and so if you are like loving this and you love this guy whoever did this Forever, you will. If you survive this era, you will be marked as basically a an evildoer, as somebody who worships death and destruction and disharmony and confusion and chaos. Because if you have DNA and a friggin' jellyfish and a a, um, a lobster can live forever technically, and somebody's designing through DNA, why would they not just make it as peaceful and loving as possible? So. Somebody hijacked the original DNA where people lived for thousands of years to that or to not dying at all. And when they die, they basically like cast off one shell and go into another. It's the strangest thing, but that's how it is. And that's literally becoming the family of themselves through time. And like the concept of death is like a, I don't know, switching beds or something or putting on a different garment. And uh, either that or they live for thousands of years, like earlier texts talk about. And, uh, and even then, they kind of, the two merge. Because if you live for thousands of years, and then you live on through your offspring, it's pretty much like you're living on in a certain way. Especially if their attention, their awareness, not attention, but was at such a high level of self-awareness, and they could see themselves in everything and one another. So, of course, they'd see themselves in their offspring, 
and imagine they could literally like turn on. And the the whole point is though that if you have DNA that can do that, then that's the whole point. Why would you have? Why would you not have that? Oh, because there's some configuration in the fine print about when the Big Bang happened. That makes no sense. If it all is what it happened in the first place, oh, no reason. So, so why is it this way? Ah, uh, because it has to be. It makes no sense. It might. We could also just have seven foot necks that do crazy stuff. No, but that was out of you know because trees were real tall. Okay, well imagine if the trees were real tall and every fruit and every food, every nourishment that we used, and there are only tree uh, climbing animals, then yes, our necks would grow seven feet long. No, that's not going to happen. It's not everything that's set up is set up for a reason. That was a terrible example because it doesn't real you know putting it all on that would it doesn't add up. Um, because there have to be so many other things to change, to change the trees and the food, to change our necks. But the idea is still there. Why not? Because it just wouldn't be that way. So you know how universes grow, what makes sense, right? In your universe factory where you just got them all lined up in the universe. And that, see, the one with all the seven-foot necks and the big trees that people stretch their necks. And, I don't like that one. It, you, no one has any say in how things go here. So anybody telling you that's how it is, that it's, it's, it's automated or an accident... They're making an excuse because they don't know. Everything has a purpose. And the point is, people die here and have disease because of a, a virus. And the person who tinkered with DNA, a demiurge, it's a, it's a faction. It's a faction that formed out of the secret projects and went back in time and started this universe and have been raping humans ever since. And people can't understand it. But the point is, whoever accepts that is not going to get... It'll be on your soul chart, your soul map forever, for all of time. That, you know, where were you in the great human renaissance? Well, I was fighting. Oh, well, how valiant. Did you ever see any demiurge? No, I was fighting people who kept coming up with ideas about, you know, freeing ourselves and liberating ourselves and freeing the children and all this stuff. I was making fun of them and fighting them. Nobody overcomes that because it's a reflection. In our minds, if you don't have a high level of soul contact to the point where you're in a collective, your individual mind, it gets erased when you leave this plane. That's how it works. How would you take it with you? Where are you going to store the information? In your pocket? You don't have pockets. You need a collective to hold it. Like a standing wave that then can separate from the tuning fork and float off in space like a bubble. Um, and so uh, the person who, the people who see that, that's the point. If you act that way, well, you're going to be an individual and you'll either go into neutrality, like a monk, and float on and just go, or you'll end up getting sucked into the demiurgic collective. That's the point. That's why there's no lukewarm. There's no half and half. Because it's literally like reality bubbles and soul groups of collectives. And if you're just complacent with what's happening here, even though nobody's getting slaughtered in front of your face and you don't taste their blood unless you've eaten fast food um, or any of the frozen food or anything like that. I mean, of the, the really, really cheap, crappy, uh, <laughs> which is good for product placement, cheap, crappy uh, fast food restaurants. But the point is, on a soul level, that doesn't matter because subconsciously you actually do know. Because there's enough information, there's enough clues to make it so. Put it this way, there's clues all throughout. And this is a complete rant, but there's two points, two or three points that you got here, so it's fine. Now I'm just ranting. But uh, if your subconscious knows, and you're actually the subconscious and the conscious mind, and subconsciously you've known because you've seen all these subliminals and your conscious mind doesn't get it, and it's up to you contacting your subconscious to get the information of reality by looking within and seeing what's really here. And if you do that, it well, dawns on you that you have this awakening experience like everybody else where you see, oh, it's all lying. They're probably doing what they shouldn't be doing. People are probably dying. People are probably being tortured. People are probably being poisoned and experimented on. And all these products are false. And they're full of toxins that just happen to be the cheapest chemicals that can use that cause cancer and sterility and so on and so forth. And if the person that's conscious mind then doesn't care because they didn't do the work, guess what? It's still a soul contract that you're accepting it all. That's why when people leave this place, they'll become part of the evil or the dark because all intents and purposes, check, 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 40 fucking things on a list will say, for all intents and purposes, you didn't give a shit. You, you didn't care. You helped them. You supported it. You probably you got a little bit of a high, maybe a tad bit like horniness thinking about like the power of being able to like just step on peasants' necks and shit like that. And you didn't care. You didn't do anything. And if you did care, you didn't care enough about what you care about to do anything. So it means forever we're graded as one of those beings that just went along with it. It doesn't matter. Imagine soldiers saying, we're just following orders, the normal trial, whatever. Okay, well, imagine a person going, well, I was just going along with society. It's the same thing. It's not going to change anything. It doesn't matter. Um, people don't realize that. 
And it's not even about, it is about them because eventually if they still mentally support the system and after this time happens, if time collapses for the final time, it will end the civilization forever. And as we are now in holographic form of mind, will go on into eternity. If a portion of our society still exists, uh, accepts and exists in correspondence with that demiurgic tendency, they will become the demiurge for all of time. There will be no redos. In the same sense, the children who are trapped will remain trapped forever. That's why it's about them, but it's also much larger and more important. This is like far out, but this is the stuff that people won't, uh, they don't look into. And, uh, or they have that dichotomy of one's like semi religious, one's semi like scientific, and even Trinity, one's spiritual, and it's all one field. There's only one reality, there's only one thing happening here. You have to find a way to break it all down and make sense of it to, to know what's happening beyond what people are thinking and forced to believe or just tempted into believing. It's like the carrot on the stick. People are just given beliefs. You don't. The whole point is to not choose because it's not real. One last thing is that in emptying the vessel and having a clean and clear vessel within, you can create a negative potential uh, space to the point where there's potentials here based upon energies and they're going to attract some situations based upon your thoughts and so on and so forth. You clear all that out. You create, it's like you're opening up a bubble of where there's no air and the air in this sense is potential. It's a charge that's going to turn into something. So what's going to happen, you have a vacuum, it's pulling in charge. Something is going to want to become what you're thinking about and what you're doing. And you remain centered and, and clear-minded and then focus on what you want to focus on regardless of what's trying to ping in and put itself within your, your field and you will generate uh, what you want. But the point is to don't generate, don't choose and you'll develop charge and what you basically feel within will naturally become what it's supposed to be because it'll be still like say there's something in your chest resonating with where you're supposed to go it'll be hit it'll be a uh, like arcing through this field of uh, this vacuum like in a glass with the diode or something or an electrode and uh, a, a plasma arc between like magnets or something it will do that and create a type of invisible connection a flame okay an inner flame which will yield the, the best results while exerting no energy. And normally people are just caught up in thinking and temptations, desires, thoughts, uh, worries, social preoccupations, the money desires, materialism, uh, getting out energy and etc. You know, think of all the people that watch fight videos or something like that and how it all works. They're living that. They're living that and the brain doesn't has mirror neurons. It doesn't differentiate between what you see and what you think and what you actually go through. It's all one thing. So. Normally, that's how we are. If we literally clear all that out, it feels weird. It's kind of like your dream of uh, sleepwalking or something. But eventually, you'll see that it turns into like a magnifier for what you want to, to experience. This is a complete rant, complete disjointed, but that's basically how the information actually is. That all this is actually happening. People know a fraction of what's going on. They're taking from our species to fund a war. If anybody goes into this next age without breaking free, without being liberated and unified in that sense, it's going to drag the whole species down eventually and create a cosmic battle that started this whole situation in the first place. Um, yeah, and that's really all that matters is that we liberate all humans and make sure that the children that are used here now and then uh, aren't going to be revived in the future and used for their psychotronic slave soldier faction which is what it is and you got to think that's how the point works they're revived in the future I mean, people really don't understand with cloning what the possibilities are it's throughout time um, there's going to be a video that touches on these things later on it's really complex information it's about how time two or three videos ago how time is kind of backwards and it doesn't really work right or that's the way we think um, so the beginning of civilization is the end, and the end of civilization is the beginning. When we get to the end of time, we reach a device that allows us to program all of time. That's what time is. It's just a game of throwing a potential probability matrix out like a fabric or an elastic band, and then it goes out to its farthest point in time and then plots out a map from there here, and then we live that and experience it. It really starts in the beginning. That's why who you're becoming, who you lead up to, is who you are. Uh, you you were in the beginning. You already have been. You already are. And it's just an overlay.
um, some strange paradoxical things like that, but the point is they and we experimented with these uh, principles of existence in the projects and we've got results. Um, it's not just a mind state or a, a quantum um, like, I don't know, hippie, like, fluffiness uh, saying or something that's being misinterpreted. It's actual. You can go to a place that you were there before because it's always ahead of you in time, and you can't get ahead of it. It's like the transcendental object at the end of time, but that's not a good explanation of it. All these people that had these ideas back in the day. All right, I'm going to end this now. I'll come up with something soon. Thank you.